Hello and welcome to this week's Rev Talk. I'm David Kellum, and it's a joy again to be with you on Rev Talks. We continue to kind of plow through the summer with our virtual version of Rev Talk. And this week, we've got three wonderful people from Ole Miss. We want you to get to, to know. Uh, you know, we've kind of done sort of a newness thing. And the first guest we have here is sort of new. She's been around, but she's going to get to play this year. And I'm going to ask her about that. I know she's super excited we got Danetta Johnson and we're also going to have here in just a moment Derek Nix our assistant football coach that handles the wide receivers and Ryan Van Hoy who coaches uh, cross country and so we've got a, a pretty good show lined up for you. we're going to start with Danetta who's a red shirt sophomore she's a guard on the Ole Miss women's basketball team you know we've talked to two student athletes so far with the relaunch of Rev Talk, we got the chance to visit with Doug McCasey off the baseball team Devontae Shuler off the women off the men's basketball team and so we'll sprinkle in some more as we move along. Danetta is originally from Queens, New York. Uh, played at Baldwin High there. Went to Georgia first. Played a freshman year at Georgia. And then has transferred to Ole Miss. Had to sit out uh, last year. She played 27 games at Georgia and started eight times at SEC Freshman of the Week. It's always good to get one of those. As uh, she had a great game against Tennessee. Hit a big three. Sparked a 13-4 run. And Georgia went on to beat uh, Tennessee in that game that she played as we mentioned Baldwin in Queens, New York, and also holding this in uh, New Hampshire, freshman, sophomore year. And she was named the top 28 overall guard, according to ESPN.com. First uh, team all state her senior year, two time first team all region the team went 29 and one at Baldwin. What was the one, Danetta? <laughs> uh, I want to first thank you for having me on the show. It's um, absolutely a pleasure, pleasure, but the one, is again, it was against St. John's the Baptiste. It was our first game of the season. We was pumped. We were, you know, we was excited to go. And that flight went down real quick. Um, we took a couple turns in the game, and it it definitely motivated us to um to pre to con continue to, oh, the, to to have victory during the season. So the one was the first game, and then you won out. Yep, that's crazy. We didn't lose a game ever since. You know, when you're playing in a sport that you, you usually lose a few, you know, like basketball. You know, football teams always trying to strive to be undefeated. In basketball, we're going to lose mm -hmm. some here and there, you would think. But the yeah. pressure gets worse and worse. But just get it out of the way and then win the rest of them. That was pretty cool. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It, it took it took everyone on the team. It's from the staff to the managers to to the, the support system, our, our, um, our parents, everyone in the community. It took everyone to – collaboratively to uh, achieve that goal. Now, you were majoring in theater arts. I thought about that. And you moved into uh, broadcast, right? Yes, sir. Well, we I have a lot a in common. <laughs> 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 yeah. I was a, a theater major for my freshman and sophomore year of college, and then I transitioned to broadcast journalism this past year. Oh, neat. Well, my mother, years ago, was professor of theater at Ole Miss. I have a theater nice. background which, by nice. the way, is pretty beneficial when you get into this world of broadcast. And then, of course, went into uh, – got my degree here at Ole Miss in journalism. And uh, I told uh, Danetta before we came on, I said, you got to take my class. So I'm going to have to twist her arm take my sports <laughs> class uh, later on. But what part of that field are you kind of interested in? Um, I'm more interested in, like, the sports analysis and, you know, the commentating of the game and doing that kind of work with that. Neat. That should be fun. Well, we need to stay together then while you finish school and try to get you Absolutely. some experience. That's for sure. Uh, tell me, Danette, about going to Georgia in the SEC, deciding to leave and to come to Ole Miss, and now you're, you know, in the Southeastern Conference still, but made the decision to, go, to come to Ole Miss. Um, you know, the transition wasn't – it wasn't um, – it wasn't bad at all because um, Ole Miss felt like home. Um, I have nothing against U the University of Georgia. I've had a great time there, great experiences. Um, I knew I wanted to stay in the SEC as I was transferring. So I was like, so as the so when the opportunity presented, presented itself, I was like, oh yeah, definitely. And I mean, the coaching staff is so genuine here. So mm -hmm. it gave me, it gave me another reason why to come. I would have never thought I'd come to Mississippi, honestly, <laughs> a kid from New York. <laughs> well, you know, we've had, we've had some folks from up there. You got another teammate from New York, right? I do. We grew up together. Her name is Mimi Reed. We grew up together. We played AAU ball. Um, our families are really tight. So it was it, that added on to it as well. What's it like playing for Coach Yo? I know you hadn't got a chance to play, and I'm going to talk to you about that here in just a moment. But 
uh, gosh, what a, a lady full of energy, very determined, very positive type person. Yeah, uh, Coach, I think someone like Coach O you need in your life forever, honestly. Um, beyond basketball, she's, she's a person of beyond basketball. She really takes care of us off the court. She makes sure we're okay. She makes sure we're uh, set up for life. She, gives, she always makes sure we're um, prepared for life after basketball because the, ba the ball is not going to bounce forever. Um, she's a ball of energy. She's always enthusiastic. She's she's such a wonderful person. I don't. It's not words wouldn't even describe her. Wouldn't well, it's been fun to get to know her myself too. And I know the last couple of years have been kind of tough on our team. And you had to sit there in a red shirt year last year and watch it. I know deep down inside you had to be going. Because I talked to Jarkel Joyner on the men's team about the same thing. Gosh, I wish you could get out there and help. Mm -hmm. but unfortunately, you couldn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it took a toll on me here and there, but mainly just having the support system and making sure that um, you keeping your head in the right space is really important because it's easy to get caught up in the losses and everything, but always looking ahead for the future is always um, relieving. Was it hard for you, Danetta, to sit out? I know you had an injury in high school, didn't you? Junior year, you missed some time then. It's, it's, yeah. it's bad when the game's kind of taken away from you for a while. Yeah. Um, it wasn't new to me, honestly. Um, I tore my ACL in my junior year of high school. Um, I was bummed. My team, my team made it to state, to the state, won, actually won the state finals and made it to the federation finals and ended up losing there, which motivated me for the next year, for the following year to uh, come back and be, and help my team win. But it was, it was, it was a different type of um, energy from, from sitting out in college and sitting out in high school. I mean, you're playing in the SEC. You want your team is getting smacked. You wanna you wanna contribute, but um, it was definitely humbling, and it opened my lot, eyes. It gave me a better perspective on everything that we need to accomplish for next year. So we turn the page. We have the number mm -hmm. one recruiting class in the SEC. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them are ready to go this time around. You know, you just yep. feel a different vibe. Uh, some of the returning players, I'm sure, are excited too that there's going to be an influx of some new talent involved what's the atmosphere around the facility right now oh everybody's just excited i mean everybody we're all on the same page we all are on the same mission we're we're excited to get this thing going um this year is going to be very fun to watch i encourage everyone to um come we have a lot of talent we have a lot of we have a lot of everything we have a lot of talent we have a lot of grit everyone is hungry everybody's competitive um it's going to be it's going to be one to remember honestly well, tell me a little bit about some of your other teammates. What do you, what do you see on the floor? You, you're, you're not really a veteran, but you've been through the league yeah. at least a player one time and watching a second time. What do you think about this team and its chances? Yeah, you can, um, you can call – I'm a veteran-ish. You can call me that. But <laughs> um, my main thing this year is just bringing the freshmen along because there's a lot of um, it's targets on our backs and there's a lot of target on their backs as well. Just um, educating them and making sure they're in a good headspace. So they can perform their, so they can perform it to their best ability. You know, peer leadership, Danetta, you know, you've been in sports for a while is, is really important. So I can see you might have some of that in you for sure, but it's going to be important for uh, people to step up and, and try to help kind of turn this ship. Yeah, I have no doubt about that they'll step up because um, they're competitors, they're winners, and, and they have a winning mindset. And everyone who has a winning mindset is um, always looking to take the next step. Well, we've had this COVID-19 thing, which has changed everything. What, I, I talked to uh, Devontae when he was actually at home in South Carolina. You've made it back to campus, and he showed me his workout facility and all the stuff he was doing. Yeah. What did you do in the, in the downtime to try to stay in shape and stay focused? Yeah, um, it's gave me a lot. The time has given me a lot of perspective. I got to spend time with my family, which I usually don't no normally do be able to. Um, I was my actually I stayed on the schedule so I wouldn't like be out of uh, I wouldn't be so far off when I come back. So my day would consist of I would wake up around seven between seven and eight and I'll eat breakfast. I'll eat a little snack and then I'll go run or work out. And then I'll come back, I'll have breakfast, and then I'll just chill for about two hours or an hour and a half it, it, if I get a nap in between then. And then I'll, go work out, then I'll go work out again, and then I'll have lunch, and I'll come back, and I'll chill for another a couple of hours, and then I'll play Uno games with my family. And then by the, to, to end the night, I'll 
in something with uh, probably stretching or yoga or core or something like that. And I'll wake up the next day and do the same thing. Well, that's good. So you kind of mixed getting the workouts in with enjoying the family too. I think that's the right mix for sure. Yep. I had definitely had the best of both worlds. <laughs> You know, a lot of things going on in our world. We got the COVID stuff and, you know, racial injustice that we're, we're trying to pull together and help battle against that too. And uh, I know that at, here at uh, our university, there's been a, a lot of support for you guys coming from a bunch of different directions, not any more important than, than anything else. And we sure appreciate you deciding to come to Ole Miss. Absolutely. Um, it was definitely scary before when coming to Ole Miss because it's such a Confederate state and, you know, um, being an African-American woman, um, young lady, actually, and coming into something like this, it was definitely risk-taking, but I'm excited to see the growth of the university and I support, and I thank you for the support from the university and everyone in the community. It's definitely been a bliss to watch um, and I'm ready for the next step for, from the university, honestly. I'm and definitely going to continue to do my part and um, make it known that we are more than athletes mm -hmm. so that we are one, we do want to be viewed as human beings, human beings before we viewed anything else. Um, but it's definitely been something good, something interesting to watch and partake in. Well, listen, we're, we're so glad that oh, before I let you go, I got to ask you, what's your favorite shot? I mean, you're a guard, right? <laughs> ah, favorite shot. I like to get to the rack, honestly. <laughs> I like to, I like to, I, I hit you with one or two moves and the and finish gone. is really, the finish is really what gets everybody. <laughs> I, I it. do well, the impossible. Back when, uh, you're a pretty good defender too, I'm hearing, right? I, I that's what I, that's what I do. That's yep. what I do as well. Back when I was doing the girls game several years ago, Jennifer Gillum was one of the players, great player. I know you've heard of Jennifer. She was phenomenal. Absolutely. So fun to be around. Went to high school together too. And uh, I used to pick her all the time. I said, gosh, you got to defend better because she scored like mad. She said, okay, how many points do I have? I said, you had 24. How many points did the girl guard, I had to guard have? She had like 18. I won that battle. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh-huh. That's what it's all you know, about, if, huh? If, you, if I can keep – if I can hold you under your average and have you have less points than I did and that I averaged, then the job is com – the mission is complete. <laughs> I don't know if Coach <laughs> Yo would agree, but we can agree, can't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think – we're definitely a defensive team first. Hey, yes. listen, thanks so much. I can't wait to see you on the court and see you play. Thank I know you. you've been patiently waiting and your turn's coming and can't wait. Thank you, Donetta. Thank you to the man above. I thank you for having me on the show. It's been um, a pleasure talking with you. All I right. Hope to see you soon. Thank you. See ya. Danetta Johnson joining us here on uh, Rev Talk. When we come back, we're going to visit with Coach Derek Nix. That's next. That's the sound of rush hour. Hello, recess. Mom! Work from home is a lot of work. Even though we're a little further apart right now, we're still in this together. Regions is donating this ad to local food banks to shine a light on them as they feed our neighbors in need. Learn how you can help or get help at regions.com slash food bank. Regions Bank, member FDIC. Question, would you rather refuel while earning Exxon and Mobile Rewards plus points on every gallon? Or would you rather refuel while sitting through my sales pitch for an exciting new timeshare opportunity? Interesting, you'd prefer the points. Well, that's proof. People prefer earning and redeeming with Exxon and Mobile Rewards Plus over owning a condo that's actually my shed. Earn points in store and at the pump with Exxon and Mobile Rewards Plus. Sign up today. Terms and conditions may apply. Available at participating Exxon and Mobile locations. Right now is the best time to upgrade your appliances and lower your energy bill with smart choice rebates from Atmos Energy. As an Atmos Energy customer in Mississippi, you'll save up to $450 when you buy select high-efficiency natural gas appliances. So use less energy and help keep our planet green. Call 877-616-6267 or visit atmosenergy.com slash smartchoiceMS for details. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. We need the fans, alumni, former players all united and everybody on the same page, which is to win championships. We didn't come here to be good. All right, that's not why we're here today. We came here to be great. 
Hey Rebel Nation, this is head football coach Lane Kiffin. Let's lock the bot Saturdays this fall. Become a season ticket holder today. Visit OleMissTix.com. That's OleMissTix.com. Hotty toddy. Having the right equipment is critical for any successful farm operation, and we can help with that. Your focus is maximizing production. Our focus is trust and loyalty. I'm Bobby Spinks with Mississippi Land Bank. If you make your living on the farm, this is your place. Since 1916, Mississippi Land Bank has worked alongside farmers and farm communities in North Mississippi. Whatever equipment upgrades you need, this is your place. Visit us at mslandbank.com. Hotty Toddy Ole Miss. Now for more Reb Talk, here's David Callum. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Reb Talk. And uh, we are honored today to visit with Coach Derek Nix. Coach Nix, of course, longtime Mississippian. Excited to have him. He's moving from running backs to wide receivers. We'll get his thoughts on that here in a moment, entering his 13th year. And, uh, of course, in the running back world, it's Done a super job with a lot of great backs at Ole Miss and Dexter McCluster, Brandon Bolden, who's had a long pro career, Jalen Walton, Jeff Scott, Jordan Wilkins, Scotty Phillips, Jerry and Ely this past year, and uh, been ranked the top three in rushing three times the SEC since Derek was the running back coach. And now in Coach Kiffin and Coach Libby's offense, he's moving over to wide receivers. We just start with Derek. How you doing, man? Everything good in your world? Doing awesome. Uh, hearing you talk about all those names in the past, man, it's put a big smile on my face. You know, thinking about the Dexters and Brandon Bolden, those guys early in my career, and, you know, having Jalen Walton and Wilkins and Scotty Phillips and Ely as of last year, man, a lot of great, great, great uh, players, but also great people that have uh, put on that Ole Miss helmet and, um, you know, had a really good career here and gone on to do some great things after they left there as well. You know, one of the guys that jumps out to me, Derek, uh, is is Brandon Bolden from a standpoint of, you know, being the, the lead back in his career hasn't happened a lot, but he's been a, a situational player, special teams player, and then a key running back in, in certain times with Patriots for, you know, all those years, won some Super Bowls. I mean, he has really forged a great career. That's a great lesson, I think, to – to, to, if there's a place for you and there's a spot, you can make it happen if you just, uh, you know, keep pushing. No doubt about it. I mean, I, I couldn't be happier for him. And, and like you said, he's doing a lot of what people say is the grunt work. Not only does he know his running back position, but he's doing contributing basically on all four phases on special teams. And he's made a long career of it. And, uh, I mean, you know, got married, got kids, and, you know, and not only become a football player, but become a husband, become a father. and just learn how to, you know, to carry himself in, the, in a proper manner. And it's, it's great to see a guy like that have success and be able to play that long. Of course, uh, Dexter became one of the first players in SEC history. Dexter McCluster did 100 yards rushing and over 500 yards receiving in the same season. First team All-American, second highest rushing school, uh, total in school history, then went on and was drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs. Good pro career. Of course, Derek himself, outstanding running back at Southern Mississippi. Three 1,000-yard uh, rushing seasons himself and is on the USM, uh, USM team of the century and his wife Allison uh, of course met at USM she was a forward on the women's basketball team they got a daughter Ava and uh, well, I guess I can ask you I ran into you and Allison uh, at one of the local restaurants kind of before we went into the shut down quarantine mode but how did that go for the family? Uh, awesome time, you know, uh, you know, I wouldn't trade it. You never want anybody to get sick or, you know, to die from what's going on with the COVID-19. But uh, in the meantime, man, it's been some, some great family time I had to spend with my wife and my child. And uh, being a profession I'm in, that, that has never happened and probably will never happen again. Yeah. So we've, uh, you know, taken great, great advantage of it and uh, just been able to be around her and being around my daughter, but, you, know, you know, when she's growing up and, and um, being able to put my stamp on her, you know, so to speak, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of be there for all the all the little the, the minuses that happened in her life and a lot of the pluses, and uh, to help coach her through everything, and uh, it's been very good. Uh, this what you're a native Mississippian, so you followed our state sports and recruited this state for years and all of that. So I know that you've got a world of history and that head of yours related to, to football in the state of Mississippi. But how, how cool was it this week for Keith Carter, AD, 
to announce that we're retiring uh, Eli Manning's number. That had to be kind of special. Well, first, David, I got to get you now. I, I've been in Mississippi for a number of amount of years, uh, 13 here at Ole Miss. I guess I coached at Southern Miss for four, and I played for five. But I am a native of Alabamian. But Origi I'm guess I'm originally a from Atala. But it's kind of like Keith Carter says. Keith Carter, I keep telling him you're from Arkansas, and he says I've been in Mississippi longer than I've been in Arkansas now. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So hey, I'm a Mississippian at heart. But uh, to to see Eli Manning, you know, get his uh, jersey retired, uh, man, what a remarkable career, uh, All American career here at Ole Miss, and, and then to go on to the NFL and become a Super Bowl champion and do the things he's done there, being a great ambassador for this university. Uh, I, I don't think it can happen to a better person uh, for him to have his jersey retired and, and really putting the standard of what a quarterback should be. You know, I, I think that kind of raises the bar and shows all the younger guys that, you know, that's coming behind him, you know, what the standard is and, and Eli Manning West that only and off the field. Yeah, I knew you were from Atal. I shouldn't have called you native Mississippian. But when you think about <laughs> – when you think about Eli, he's technically native Louisiana as well. Uh, but the Manning family, of course, has been big in our state for, for a long, long time. But, Derek, let me follow up with that a little bit, too. Uh, it is amazing, isn't it, for those that have been originally from the state of Mississippi. You look at the pro level and, uh, you know, the junior college system in our state has been phenomenal. High school, we're a small state, but, man, we've been super productive and outstanding football players. Man, you sound like I need to take you into some of these homes on some of these recruiting trips. <laughs> you know, uh, man, the state of Mississippi has, you know, been remarkable having, you know, just talented guys in both football, basketball, baseball, you know, sports all across the you know, across the board. And, you know, we don't get a lot of credit for a lot of things, but uh, that we can really take pride in. And uh, that a lot of these guys, you know, they come out of high school and, very raw and, and but talented and uh, having the opportunity to go to college and kind of hone those skills. And, and you see us on the biggest stages, you know, from being Super Bowl champions to MVPs of leagues, uh, doing a lot of great things. And I think it's only can continue to grow and continue to, you know, progress that way. Uh, you know, our universities, you know, having more and more resources to be able to provide for these guys when they come out of high school is only going to make it better. You know, Derek Nix is uh... – not only played at Southern Mississippi, he's recruited the stage you mentioned for a long, long time. One of the best recruiters in the SEC, one of the top recruiters in the country, uh, for that matter, and uh, is focused primarily on on this state. But Derek, tell me, tell me what is the key to being a successful recruiter? Because you've had some sustainability in that area as a coach. I think the biggest thing is you know relationships. Uh, I think the level that we're on uh, recruiting, I think a lot of us have the same amount of, you know, type of facilities. You know, we all have really good stadiums. We all have good locker rooms or whatnot. But I think the next part is just relationships and, and just being honest. I, I think that's really what I've uh, kind of prided myself in is, hey, man, you see what you, what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. And uh, just try to be transparent, try to be able to be in a position where you can continually communicate with one another. And, you know, and, and understanding that every kid, you're not going to win on every kid. Uh, but you got to win on the majority of them. And, you know, a lot of, you know, every kid has got to find what's their perfect fit and, uh, and understanding that sometimes it's going to be your school, sometimes it's not. But being able to just put your best foot forward and, and just making sure that you're available and uh, that you know that, that the kids know that you want to have a real relationship with them. And it goes beyond just their four years at college. I think that's the biggest sticking point is helping them get prepared to life after Ole Miss and knowing that, they, that you're going to be in their corner for the rest of their life. Well, and then extended even with that is you're caring for, you know, these coaching staffs in the state that are in high school and junior college and, and legitimately, you know, wishing them a lot of success and, and, uh, and, and respecting their outstanding players too. I just heard so many good things about you from other people in the recruiting world. Well, and I, I think that goes, you know, what comes with the territory. They get uh, used to seeing a familiar face, mm -hmm. and uh, they remember now. They remember how you treated them when they had a top guy and when they don't have one. Did you show up uh, just only when I had somebody that was able to be recruited? You know, were you available to, to speak or give knowledge, football knowledge, whatever it may be, make yourself readily available to them at, at your, you know, at your expense and, 
where they're welcome to come up on your campus, you know, for a game, for a practice, football camp, whatever it may be. I think you have to have that great bond or relationship with them to where they feel like they trust you. And that not that you're going to be 100%, but that, hey, you know what? He's going to be trustworthy. He's going to be truthful for me. Whether I like it or not, he's going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get what I'll get from Derek Mix. Yeah, I, I remember Coach Tommy Tuggle told a story a long time ago when he first left us and went to Auburn. We won't bring that up, but when he went over to Auburn and uh, became a war eagle, so to speak, he, uh, he, he went to North Birmingham, uh, the story goes, and went to a school that had no prospects whatsoever, went by just to introduce himself. And, and basically, the coach told him, he said, you know, Coach, uh, I know you're the big head coach at Auburn now, but we don't have any prospects right now. He said, I don't care about that. I just want to come meet you because you might have one down the road. I think that's important to have right. a relationship with everybody. It, it truly is. And that's kind of the way I got brought up when I even started my coaching career at Southern Miss. And, uh, man, just go knock on every door. Uh, you never know who's coming. You know, it might be an, uh, you know, an eighth grader or ninth grader that's coming up that will have a chance and just your impact of uh, for kids in that school uh, to see a, you know, a college coach come through with that logo on from the SEC. I mean, it can provide a lot of motivation for them to make better grades, uh, to work a little harder on and off the field, to, to help achieve those goals. And whether they come to Ole Miss or not, I think just that presence sometimes helps those high school coaches out. And that thing that goes a long way with them in the, in the end. Yeah, no doubt. All right, let's talk about your new room. Moving from running backs to wide receivers. Uh, how did that conversation go? I mean, you've been a super extremely successful running back coach, but hey, here's a, a new challenge for you. Well, the, the first thing um, before is it's kind of like a God thing because I, I have been tinkering with this idea probably, probably for like the last three years. You know, you know, is it time to, to move on to another position? Uh, to for me, just for my personal growth, and uh, I heard some speakers over this pandemic talk about, and they said, "Well, you know, growth doesn't happen in comfort. You know, you're real comfortable doing running backs. You know, you know, like the other side of your hand, you played it, and for this to come up the way it did, and being able to do it here at Ole Miss, it's, it's been great. Um, you know, dealing with this part of the game, always known about it. You know, I really consider myself." a football coach. I've coached tight ends. Mm -hmm. I actually started my GA, uh, my coach career out on defense of all places, coaching defensive backs. Uh, Andre Hobson, who's the head coach of Southern Miss now. So I got yeah. a chance to learn from him. And uh, of course, doing running back. So this is just, to me, a kind of an ev evolution of it. Uh, moving on to another spot. Uh, you know, bringing a lot of my football knowledge to this receiver room and, and then learning some of the, the nuances of what they do day in and day out. And just making myself a complete coach and also, you know, helping us achieve what we want to do as an offense. And, and being a returning coach to this staff, uh, uh, which was rare, obviously, as we see all the new coaches in this, in this staff, you do have a little bit of advantage because you at least involved in the offense knew about uh, a lot of the returning guys that are in your room. No doubt. Help recruit a lot of them, uh, you know, known them personally, you know, from where they live and, and, uh, being able, like you said, being able to be here for their first part of their career to see, you know, their pluses of what they did the previous seasons uh, has helped me out tremendously. Uh, getting to know them and on a personal level is uh, something I've really kind of worked on since uh, February when all this kind of started and, and continue to do that right now. And the pandemic has made it a little harder, mm -hmm. but uh, we're still getting that done right now. And uh, so just but really excited overall about the opportunity and um, loving the offense that we have here with Coach Levy. Uh, I think it's going to be really wide receiver friendly and uh, put them in a position where they can have an opportunity to make plays and affect the game. And I think that's got them all fired up as well and working a little bit harder, staying a little bit more focused and just ready to see where it's going to end. And that position seems like it has emerged, kind of like the running backs have emerged into, like we talked about Dexter, where you got to run and catch. And, then, of course, on the receiver side, you look at a guy like Elijah Moore, who's tremendous after the catch. So uh, I know that that's going to be a big part of this offense. No doubt. Getting out in space, winning some one-on-ones, uh, making the catch, of course, running the route, making the catch. But then again, you know, how, how much yak can we get, you know, mm -hmm. after that catch and turning a 10-yard game maybe into a 15, 20-yard game and, and uh, put us in a position where we can make some explosive plays. Tell me a little bit about this staff. I've asked some of the other guys, you've come into the new staff, 
Uh, you look around the room, you know, what do you think? In your case, you've been here for a while. Here's another group of guys that are coming in the building with you, so to speak. But uh, just your comments about this particular staff. Uh, man, very young and energetic. Uh, that's the first thing I would probably describe them all, starting with Coach Levy on, on the offensive side. Uh, but, man, um, you know, just – we all – first of all, we all darn near live next to each other. So, once we leave work, we get to see each other when we get home, too. So, it's kind of like a family. Um, but guys that really want to work hard and want to roll up their sleeves and have success. And so far, so good. And, like I said, the pandemic has kind of kept us separated a little bit. Mm -hmm. But we're back in since June 1 and, uh, you know, trying to go back to no life as normal. And, and I guess as far as Lane goes, Lane Kiffin, you coached with Chris a while, so maybe you already had a previous relationship with Lane. No, I did not know him until now. Uh, but, mm -hmm. man, awesome offensive mind and great head coach, energetic, and uh, learning, learning a lot from him from his, my short time being around him. Uh, great evaluator from a recruiting standpoint and, just look and continue to see how we're going to be able to do things going into the season. Well, I know you can't wait for these guys to get through with the personal workouts and y'all get your hands on them a little bit. And uh, I, know, I know it's going to be just around the corner, but it seems like it's been forever with no spring. No doubt about it. You know, having no spring football, of course, you know, what was going on is obvious why we didn't do it. But, man, you know, those 15 practices were valuable and not getting that, that opportunity is kind of making us all, you know, just itching at the opportunity to get back on the field and work with them some. And uh, when that day ha happens, you know, it'd be like uh, Christmas Eve as, as far as I'm concerned and getting my hands on them and working with them and, you know, just doing our normal football things that we do. Well, hey, great talking to you. I know you're going to do a wonderful job in the wide receiver room. And uh, we, we just are, are very grateful that you're still here at Ole Miss and uh, uh, doing your thing for our university. We appreciate you. Well, I thank you. I, I'm very blessed and fortunate to be here. And, uh, man, I can't think of a better place to be at right now. And uh, I think the future is bright. We got a lot of kids that are you know, ready, willing, and ready to go to roll up the shoes to go to work. And great coaching staff. And, uh, man, I'm, just, I'm fortunate and blessed to have the opportunity to be here. Derek, thank you, man. Okay, thank you. Derek Nix, who's our new, new, I should say, wide receiver coach, been the running back coach here at Ole Miss for several years. We sure appreciate it. Him. Hey, we're going to be back with our third segment of Rev Talk uh, this week, and we're going to be talking to our cross-country head coach, Ryan Van Hoy, and uh, we look forward to uh, getting his thoughts when we return. In sports, success is measured in the number of points scored, in games won, and in championships earned. At Shelter Insurance, we measure success in the quality of our products and services, in how we support our communities, in being there when you need us most. In fact, 9 out of 10 people surveyed with a claim would recommend Shelter to a friend. To find out how Shelter can be there for you, visit shelterinsurance.com. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Hi, this is Gant Boone with Oxford University Bank. You've heard about our Casasa Cash Checking Account paying 2.5% interest on balances up to $50,000. That interest could, depending on your balance, pay for an unlimited cell phone plan for you and one other, or pay for two gas fill-ups per month for an average size gas tank, or maybe a nice mint on the square is what you desire. Regardless, this is real money we will give you for doing three things you are probably already doing. So stop in today or visit us online at liveoxfordbankoxford.com, Oxford University Bank, member FDIC. Hey Rebel Nation, this is head football coach Lane Kiffin. Let's lock the bot Saturdays this fall. Become a season ticket holder today. Visit OldMissTix.com. That's OldMissTix.com. Hotty toddy. For over 50 years, Mississippi Asthma and Allergies Board Certified Team of Allergists have treated patients in Mississippi by identifying triggers that cause patients trouble and creating personalized treatment plans. Now with offices in Jackson, Ridgeland, Meridian, D'Iberville, and Oxford, it's like we're right next door when you need us. Treating adults, infants, teens, and Ole Miss students. Find the Mississippi Asthma and Allergy Clinic near you at msaac.com. Mississippi Asthma and Allergy, helping Mississippi live life to the fullest. That's the sound of rush hour. Hello, recess. Mom. Work from home is a lot of work. Mommy. 
Even though we're a little further apart right now, we're still in this together. Regions is donating this ad to local food banks to shine a light on them as they feed our neighbors in need. Learn how you can help or get help at regions.com slash food bank. Regions Bank, member FDIC. As we navigate the COVID-19 crisis, O'Reilly Auto Parts is dedicated to serving you. We've been deemed an essential business, so our doors will stay open. We encourage you to buy online, then pick up curbside. Together, we're committed to getting through this. Hotty toddy Ole Miss. Now for more Reb Talk, here's David Callum. Hello and welcome back to Rev Talk, and we're in our third segment of this week. And uh, boys, it's been a good show so far, and each week we've had a lot of fun, and we're going to have some more fun. We've got <laughs> with us now associate head uh, cross-country coach, assistant coach for distance, Ryan Van Hoy. I don't know how you put that on a business card. That's a lot of stuff to put on a business card, right? Yeah, I don't. I just condense it to distance coach. I think it keeps it <laughs> Keep it simple for sure. Uh, but he's going his eighth season, has done a tremendous job at Ole Miss. Our cross-country program especially has just been exceptional as of late and turned Ole Miss into one of the top programs nationally and still trajectory going the right way. I know he's going to talk to us about it in a moment. He's guided Ole Miss to 16 bursts and NCAA cross-country championships in program history. Maybe seven now. Is it seven? I think we've had on the men's side – uh, we've been six times to NCAAs, and the women have been four times. Wow, that's incredible. And we're just one of seven programs in the nation to place both men's and women's in the top 25 in each of the last three seasons, including uh, this past year, too. But just in general, how are you? I know you, you're hanging out in North Carolina today, visiting family, but uh, everything been going good for you? Yeah, I've been doing well. Um, you know, obviously, things have been a little different than normal this time of year with uh, no recruiting and no, uh, at least no in-person recruiting and, and no uh, season coming off no season for the first time in forever. So that's a little strange, but uh, yeah, I've been kind of using this time to connect with family. I, you know, like, like you said, been in North Carolina the, the past week and a half, just visiting with family and heading back to Oxford tomorrow. Um, but yeah, just kind of using some time to, to relax and hopefully prepare for a season if we have one. Ashburn, North Carolina. I told you earlier, I've got a daughter who lives up there. We're going to North Carolina next week. What a cool state. There's so many neat things to do in North Carolina. Yeah, you know, it's a great place to grow up. You've got access to the beach. You've got access to the mountains within probably three-hour drive from where I live or where I'm from, which is the dead center of the state. So uh, just a cool place all around. You know, we, you, you mentioned a little bit about the athletes and all. They're returning to campus and how did downtime go? I know, like the other sports in the spring, you had to be disappointed that things kind of came to, to an end. But uh, kind of a two-part question, uh, how did they handle that? How did you keep in touch with the oh, three-part question? <laughs> and, and uh, you know, how does that affect you from an eligibility standpoint down the road? Yeah, that's a lot to unpack there. So I guess we'll start with when everything kind of happened and came down that the season was canceled and then everything was done for the rest of the year we were actually at NCAA indoors in Albuquerque so uh, it was kind of weird we were at the track the day before the meet practicing and you'd kind of seen around the country all these different things were starting to shut down and uh, the NBA and college basketball and all this stuff kind of grinded to a halt and I knew for sure at that point we were in trouble so um, you know obviously they they canceled the meet there and uh, right on the heels of that said we wouldn't have an outdoor season either. So, you know, I think for the two athletes that were at that meet with that I was there with, I mean, I think it was a lot of shock initially. Um, but I think as things started to settle in and started to make sense of what was going on, it was obviously clear why that was a good decision at that point in time. So, um, you know, I think since that point, um, our teams in terms of uh, dealing with that are coming to terms with it. You know, I think it's been a little bit different for each person. I think, mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'm in charge of 35 athletes on our team. So, you know, you got 35 different responses to something like this. So um, it's kind of been varied, but I think overall in general, they've handled it the best they could. Um, I know most people have tried to keep running as best they can, you know, obviously from a training perspective right now, um, anything they do is voluntary. It's kind of on their own or up to them. So, uh, but you know, most of our team is motivated to continue running even on their own, even if we don't have practice. So, um, I think they're doing their, the best they can to stay fit and hopefully be ready to have a cross-country season in August like usual. 
Well, I know you're looking forward to getting it going again, too. But uh, Waleed Solomon, two-time All-American, first Rebel and Cost Country to repeat that. And you start with him. What an incredible athlete. Yeah, and I think another piece of your question there with the eligibility, he's a good person as an example. So, like, you know, obviously now Waleed will have a fifth year of outdoor track eligibility. But, you know, there's a good chance if we have a full season this year, um, you know, he could be in a position where maybe he could keep running professionally. So I don't know that it would make sense for him to come back for a fifth year. But, you know, now he has the option to do so if needed. So um, I guess it's good to have that in his back pocket. But I think for uh, especially for our athletes, you know, they are doing cross country, indoor track and outdoor track. So a lot of times it's kind of hard to figure out if someone's coming back for a fifth year, but they only have one of those three seasons of eligibility. Um, it kind of complicates things a little bit. So. Um, you know, we, we'll have a handful of people that are in that same position that um, will now have a fifth year of track eligibility, and they may have already redshirted other seasons too. So, again, that'll kind of be highly um, variable depending on the individual. But um, I, guess, I guess for for all of these folks, at least they have that opportunity to use that season if they need to down the road. John Rivera earned All American too, didn't he, Coach? He did. So, you know, I, I feel really bad for John. You know, obviously Waleed had been to the indoor NCAA meet before, um, but that was John Rivera's first visit to the indoor national meet. And I think he was really in a, a great position to be an All-American or at least contest to be an All-American. And so, um, you know, I think him losing that opportunity probably stung a little bit more just because he had never been to that meet. Um, and he had missed the meet the previous year. He had qualified on our DMR, but had to miss the meet due to injury. So it's kind of a, <laughs> a real bummer for him but you know he had a great outdoor season last year and made it to NCAA outdoor and um, you know I have no doubt that whenever he's back on the track we could definitely uh, expect big things from Mr. Rivera so um, yeah temporary setback but he's definitely put himself in a position to have a really good close to his career at Ole Miss. Both programs seemingly doing really really well and I know I know how coaches are you keep raising that bar and you want to get it just to you know keep moving up the ladder so to speak but the cross country program now distance runners now versus what you'd like to see down the road. Oh yeah. I think, you know, we, in talking with some of our recruits recently and things like that, I think, you know, at Ole Miss now we've shown that we, we have a very consistent level of like good success mm -hmm. and, you know, we can get to the national meet every year in cross country. We're consistently one of the top teams in the sec uh, but now we want to try to inch up a little bit higher than that. Like on the, on the women's side, as an example, you know, we've been to the NCAA meet four years straight and they've been 24th, 25th, uh, 22nd and 21st. So mm -hmm. I, I joke that we're really good at being like 20th to 25th. Uh, but, you know, we'd like to try to maybe take another step and be able to be top 15 on the women's side this year. If we have a, a season, um, you know, we only, we only graduate one girl from, um, our team last year and we bring back our top runner Cleo who redshirted last season so um, yeah, I think on the women's side certainly lots of opportunity to hopefully have our best team ever uh, this fall and on the men's side you know we've been on the podium in cross country so I think anytime you've done that um, you at least have proven that you can be a national level program consistently um, I think on the men's side what, what I'd like to see is just a, a bit more consistency when we get to the national meet um, you know this past year we had a really really bad uh, strike of illness at the last second so you know we had a really good SEC meet repeating as champions but between that point and the end of the season which is a three-week period we had maybe two or three people that went down with a flu or various other illnesses and uh, we just weren't able to put it together um, in Terre Haute the way we wanted to so uh, I think a little bit more maybe focus and discipline throughout the season especially the final three weeks on the men's side um, so that we can get to nationals and do what we know we're capable of as a team. And we've got a lot of guys coming back with a lot of experience this fall. So um, could be one of our best teams again. Where are some of the places you run it? What's the schedule like? Or has the COVID things affected that somewhat? Yeah, so that, that's obviously um, kind of made things a little bit more complicated. You know, right now I know we, we plan to start our season in Memphis like we always do. Um, We'd like to go down to LSU after that, if we can, to get a preview of the SEC course. That's where the SEC championships are slated to be held this November. Um, we typically go to Vanderbilt and race in September, and we are going to kind of a uh, invitational at Oklahoma State as like a preview of the national meet at the end of September. Um, but we're still trying to figure out what we're going to do in the middle of October. We typically would go 
uh, fly somewhere for like a pre-nationals or a big invitational, but we may try to do something that's a little bit smaller this year, hopefully uh, maybe something that's a little bit closer so we don't have to travel by plane. Uh, mm -hmm. We're trying to figure out the details on that. So that's still to be determined. We're visiting Ryan Van Hoy from our track program. Of course, as he mentioned a moment ago, dealing with 35 student athletes. I think sometimes, Ryan, we forget that in the world. As Ole Miss fans and track, I mean, that is the bulk of our student athletes. When you add the entire men's and women's squads together, there's a lot of people that you and Connie and, and company are dealing with. Yeah, I think, too, like I, I tell people this sometimes, especially in recruiting. So, you know, with track and field combined, we have upwards of 90 athletes. And I think wow. – you know, men and women's cross country, indoor and outdoor track that constitutes six of the 18 sports we carry at Ole Miss. Mm -hmm. So uh, from a numbers perspective, program wise, that's a third of the department. So um, I think a lot of times our program is a lot bigger than some people maybe realize. Yeah, no doubt about it. But we sure appreciate all the hard work. And it's been fun to watch it grow. You know, when Coach Walker was here several years ago and, and kind of establishing the foundation for track at Ole Miss, it's been really cool to see it continue to grow. Yeah, well, certainly I mean, it's a great place to coach. You, you know, you're supported really well administratively. Um, and, it has, you know, I think Ole Miss just offers a lot of really good things for student athletes. It's, it's a great place for them to be successful. It may, certainly makes things easier to recruit and coach at a place like Ole Miss. So. Well, I don't know if mom's ready to get you out of the house and send you back or, or, or you know, she wants you to stay longer. We're looking forward to getting you back to Oxford. Though. Well, I look forward to coming back as well. And, uh, like I said, hopefully we'll – be able to get these athletes back on the course safely this fall and look forward to having a successful season if we can. All right, Ryan. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Ryan Van Hoy, dealing with our cross-country teams. Great to get a coach here at the end segment. We'll see you next week on Red Talk.